I'm gonna interview Joe. Where are you going? Okay, well, let me get it. <laughs> How are the kids? How are the kids are great. Place first time on the street circuit or no? Dude, so coming up to it, I was super stressed out. Uh, like, are you stressing? Are you stressing? A little bit, bro. I know. Being a street race, um, concrete walls everywhere. Uh, and also owning the car at the same time. I I was scared that I was gonna push it and have consequences. And then we showed up and there's bipolar weather where it was raining, it wasn't raining. Man, it's still raining, Sean. It's supposed to stop at 12. What's going on? So now it's two or three. Oh, I mean, we're racing late, so. We might come back at eight. We didn't know if you were gonna go on, on rains or slicks. Uh, it was pretty stressful. And then when we were approaching the night race, I realized that all the all the reference points that I put up were probably not going to be there because I put them up in the daytime. I had no practice that night, and then it started raining, and I was like, "Oh man, this is going to be an exciting race," you know. And I wasn't really worried about myself, but I was worried about like a person behind me losing control and just t-boning us the on the on the apex or something like that, you know, something that's out of our hands. But I mean, that race did get canceled due to thunderstorms, so that was maybe a blessing. I don't know. I'm, I mean. Unfortunately, we would have had a better starting position, I believe, if we ran that race because we started race one, or actually the Sunday race from our practice times because we had qualifying and race one canceled. All right, so you were with us at the snow race. And then, sure. And, um, we, this was our, Tennessee was our first race back together. What do you think about the team? Do you think we've grown? Do you think it's changed? What, and how was it fitting in? I mean, in? numerically, the team has grown. There was, I mean, like eight core members, which was like a good, um, like, unit. yeah, it was a good unit. Um, everyone had a core responsibility. Whereas in Nashville, we had an entourage, which was like fantastic. Um, but you know, because like work in the paddock can be quite stressful and can get quite busy at times. Um, often you just need to isolate yourself as best you can um, in order to effectively communicate with um, engineering with mechanics um, and it's just like you gotta take the good with the bad in, in, in that regard right you like the you like the 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 spirit let's go <laughs> the vibes that the team like of that size brings uh, but you also have like to focus and and make sure that you're providing the best hardware for our wheel man um, and I think we did that uh, despite having a lot of fun and interesting distractions throughout the entire event. Yeah, yeah. I believe you were supposed to start outside on 15, but you actually ended up on the grid at 14. Is that right? Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I think someone got penalized or something happened. So we got moved up one, and which put us on the outside for race one. And it was pretty nuts. I mean, being that far in the mid-pack, it always fans out and there's room to throw it in especially with people getting timid and, and also with the accordion effect, you know, uh, people get backed up past their braking zones. So there's always opportunity to be had and that's what we did. I went in through the middle on turn one and then on the exit turn one, I saw everybody protecting the inside because they're all scared of hitting the outside walls on these on these corners. So I stuck around the outside for a couple more times. Maybe on the third time it might not have been the best idea because everybody's starting to fan out and get speed again and it wasn't as accordion up, but I mean, we live and we learn, so I mean, I I knew that there was grip on the outside, though, for the rest of the race, Love which it. helped awesome. us so get passes later on. Being all over it, and here we go again. Big move down to the right-hand side by the 22. All right, here they go. Wet and Joel and McCarthy, who's going to outbreak each other? Oh, a little bit of contact down there. Definitely rough trade and a little bit of paint, and it looks like McCarthy's going to be able to pull the advantage. Yeah, do you think IndyCar helped laying out a lot of grip? Was it different than in practice from the actual race? Oh my gosh, I mean, IndyCar, that was the first time we raced in the same weekend as IndyCar, and they threw down so much rubber. But I mean, good thing our our guys on our team, our crew guys, Joe, Craig, and Vlad, and all of them read the track really well. Craig has experience with IndyCar, so he knows how much rubber they, they can lay down. So we did make a huge swing to loosen up the car in preparation for the amount of rubber that was on the track, but I, we still could have done a little bit more, but I think us making that big of a swing, we we're better off than most people out there. So that's why we were able to go from 14th to 6th.
And speaking of from 14 to 6, I'm sure everyone wants to hear about the drama that happened around turn 7, 8. Let's hear about that. Oh my god, yeah. So um, I was I was coming around and unfortunately right off from the restart I had to get, um, we weren't as packed up on the on the restart halfway through the race, so there was some gap. So by the time I, I did some battling, I got some clean air, the group in front of me was pretty much gone. And they're out of sight, so I couldn't see what was going on, but apparently I had a really huge battle going on, and they had a three car collision on the exit of turn eight, which is a blind corner. So I was exiting turn seven, and my dad got on the radio, he says, hey, there's a pile up, go wide, go wide. So I obviously couldn't see anything that was going on because it was such a blind corner that I was approaching, but I, I trusted him, so I on purpose missed the apex, shut the car down, overslowed it, and barely made it through the accident. I really think that would have collected us too, like so many people in front of us, um, just because it was such a blind track with the, the concrete walls and all the sponsors up on the fencing so you can't see through it to see ahead. It was pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, it must have been a wild corner just in terms of the whole race in general. So. Oh, yeah. What was it like with all the bipolar weather? Were you stressed out, excited, were you kind of um, wanting the the kind of churn up of teams to kind of yeah, that, the opportunity? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. I think I think a lot of teams um, have had probably a better ability of looking at weather, predicting what it was going to do. I think this is the first time that we as a team uh, really needed to do our best with the resources that we had to track that storm moving in. Um, it was like, we, we were watching it for like 12 to 18 hours as it was developing, how fast it was moving, etc. cetera. Um, so we were using all the resources available to us to see if it was gonna land during the race. Um, we were optimistic, as was everybody. <laughs> It's very hot. Feels like 102. Uh, we prepped the car and set up the car for slicks. Um, you know, we tightened the car up just a bit to kind of hedge our bets, but we really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, so we prepared a plan with respect to changing out terrains if that was going to happen, and I think that plan was reasonable, even though it was potentially um, not within the rules, which we learned uh, after. We actually learned that yesterday, that our three-man tire changing plan is uh, illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, again, a bit of a blessing in disguise that um, the race was canceled. But we weren't super nervous. Like, I know, Tommy, like a lot of your reference points would have changed. The track conditions would have made it a bit difficult to um, drive the car conservatively. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, really, I don't really want to think about it. Like your dad, I think, was very pleased that the race was canceled because, you know, half the track seemed dry from our perspective, but the other side that Terry could see from his spotting position was uh, was drizzly and getting and getting wet. So, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. How, how do you feel about everything just in total? How do you feel after the race, the weekend, going into next race? I think I think this Music City Grand Prix was a turning point that we needed in this season because the last few races we were getting a lot of bad luck and things weren't going our way and kind of morale was low. So having this good of a result in Nashville and turning things around and going from 14th to 6th, not only getting the top 10 and getting points, but also getting prize money for, for, for the first time was very nice, which helps us continue throughout the season. Um, we got guys who are back on the team like Joe, Craig, Vlad, who are making great um, moves and calculations on the car between sessions so I think we got a good team going to Road America. I think Road America is going to be fun. I think it's a fantastic track. It's I think home track for you too, right? what, Yeah, home, home track for sure. I've driven it several times but that was 10 years ago. Uh, the track has been repaved since uh, and it, it is actually quite new. I think they opened up three months ago. Um, I think it's going to feel very familiar to you. It's a big track. It's a fast track. Um, so that means really sticking with the pack. Um, so we're going to set up the car as best we can to uh, maximize top speed and really get you cooking down these three straights that Road America has. It's a four-mile track. Um, but there's really not a lot of drama associated with the turns. Um, there's only one or two turns that you can kind of get in trouble. But we're going to be with a skeleton crew. It's going to be a very, again, um, kind of SEAL Team 6 approach. Everyone is going to have to be... Um, top-notch in their area of responsibility um, but 
with a lean team, you know, I think we've all worked together and historically have, have been pretty um, efficient and pretty successful together. So I expect nothing but the best out of the group this weekend out of RA. Um, we're going to do a lot of front loading, you know, in terms of work. So we're going to prep the car a few days in advance. We're going to protect, you know, uh, we're going to work on operations a few days in advance. So we're, we'll be race ready when we, when we pack in on Wednesday and have like a, a really, you know, optimistically saying like have a really easy uh, race weekend. Cool. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Well, thank you for your time, Tommy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, love, I just love talking ran, about random shit. Um, I've had, I, we had like a bush meat experience in Cambodia where there are like, there's bat, there are crickets and grubs and various insects. Um, but apparently it's also quite a problem in Cambodia and other developing countries in that area because a lot of people believe um, some of these meats or the byproducts of these animals that they hunt and kill in the wild have uh, spiritual qualities, medicinal qualities that are completely unfounded. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of these animals uh, have been killed off. Goop. And some of these are endangered species um, and they're beautiful creatures that should be protected and preserved. Um, so there just is a lot of education that needs to be built um, throughout these communities in order to preserve their own wildlife.